Hello everyone and welcome to this week's training area where today we're going to talk about a really interesting extraction method called sock slit extraction. Now before I can talk about sock slit, sock slit extraction, I need to talk about essential oils first. Now essential oils are natural oils which is usually extracted from aromatic plant material that gives the plant its characteristic smell. Now these essential oils is used widely in the cosmetic industry, it's used for perfumes, colognes, it's used in our um, creams etc and it also has a lot of medicinal properties as well. Now literally for thousands of years people have been reliant on these natural oils, these essential oils as well as the plant extract for the medicinal properties, for the healing properties. Now one of the most popular methods of extracting these oils is through distillation. Now if you have made gin using vapor infusion then you've practically done the extraction of essential oils. There is two major differences though between producing an aromatic gin and extracting essential oils. First big difference is the solvent used. In gin production obviously we use ethanol, we infuse the ethanol with these plant um, material and with essential oil extraction we use water. Now the reason why we're using water is because essential oils are hydrophobic so it does not mix with water so it forms a clear layer on top of the water layer which means it's easily extractable we can just take the essential oil layer, layer off of the solvent the water layer and then another big difference between gin infusion and essential oil extraction is basically the amount of botanicals used. <clears throat> now, if you've made gin and you might have used too much botanicals, you might also notice that if you add water, that it becomes cloudy, it becomes white. Those are the essential oils dropping out of suspension, becoming visible to the eye. Now, we don't generally want that in a gin. In essential oil extraction, we want those oils. We really want to get as much of these oils out of the plant material as possible. So with essential oil extraction, we're going to use as much plant material as we possibly can to get the best or the, um, the best yield from that. But there's one problem. Not all plant material can be extracted via distillation, or they can, but it's, it's not the most efficient way of extracting them. Now you get these hard to extract plant material, and these includes a lot of your seeds, um, some of your, your flowers, some of your barks, and your gums that distillation just don't work as well. Now there are other extraction methods that we use to, to extract these essential oils or these um, components of the plant material and one of them is soxid extraction. Now soxid extraction is a type of exhaustive extraction method where we can literally extract every single last bit of oil or the components inside that plant material. And it's also a continuous method uh, or continuous extraction method. So we can literally run this extraction process for hours or days or weeks. So I'm going to show you how Soxid actually works. So before we can do that, let's quickly check all the equipment we need in order to do this practical. So the first thing you need to do this practical is a heat source. So today I'm going to be using my gas burner. The reason why I'm using my gas burner is because you can fine tune the, fine -tune the heat addition really, really exact. Um, if you're using an induction plate and you'll notice that, or maybe you'll notice that this is the boiler of the 13 meter round still, and this can work on induction. But the problem with the induction plate, it is either too hot or too cold. So there's not a nice in-between setting of my heat addition. So it's not going to work with my socks of extraction. So if you have a 30 meter answer or a boiler that can work on induction, try to avoid it. Try going back to the most traditional method of using gas. Okay, so this is my gas. Like I said, this is my boiler. This is a 30 meter boiler. You can go smaller, you don't have to go as big, especially for the size of my sock slit extractor that I'm using today. The thing is, I just didn't have a smaller boiler, but the size is fine. This is going to work for our experiment. Then, the most important part of this whole thing is my sock slit extractor. Now, my sock slit extractor is actually quite a clever design. 
So firstly, let's look at the bottom. So this is the base, and you can see it's completely sealed off from the rest of my um, extractor. So this is my, my cylinder. There is one hole here at the side. I don't know if the camera will be able to see that. What's going to happen is we're going to heat up our solvent. In this case, our solvent is going to be ethanol. It's going to go from its liquid phase into its vapor phase. Now that vapor needs a path to travel. And it's going to take this path over here. It's going to enter this tube. And it's going to come out. Sorry, this thing is quite heavy. Here at the top. Now remember, it's still going to be in this vapor phase. So it's naturally going to move upwards. On top of the oxide extractor, there is going to be the condenser connected. So the salt, uh, the vapors is going to move upward into my condenser. My condenser is going to condense these vapors back into its liquid form, and it's going to drip back into this chamber over here, this glass chamber. Remember, it's completely sealed off, so nothing is going to start dripping back yet. And as we continue with the heat addition, more steam is going to form, it's going to travel up this tube, it's going to be condensed, the condenser and it's going to drip back. And this is going to slowly start filling up until it reaches the maximum height of this bend. So this tube um, is basically a level indicator and you'll see as this starts filling up, my tube is also going to start filling up. As soon as it's reached the height of my bend, it's going to start draining and all of this liquid inside here is going to drain along with it down this tube back into my boiler and then it's going to repeat so it's going to form its vapors again the vapor is going to travel up my tube the vapor is going to go into my condenser condenser is going to condense it my um, chamber is going to start filling up as soon as it reaches the height of the spend it's going to drain now inside the socket extractor we've got our thimble this is a stainless steel thimble this is just basically a basket in which we're going to be putting in our plant material. Now what's going to happen is as this starts filling up, it's going to start extracting the plant material that is present in my thimble. And you'll notice that the color of your liquid is going to start changing. So ethanol is clear, it looks like water, and you're going to see it starts going to turn brown because we're going to be extracting um, oak, French oak chips. And then it's going to drain. And you'll notice in this tube, there's never going to be color coming through. This is always going to be clear. What's going to happen is all of your extractor plant material is going to stay behind in your boiler. And this is always going to be just the pure ethanol evaporating. So it's almost as if you're dosing your oat chips with clean solvent constantly. Now the problem is, um, or the reason why this works so well, is because... You're constantly extracting with clean solvent. Now, remember, solvents get saturated. So you can't use, let's say, a liter of solvent on 10 kgs of oak. It's never, it's going to get, become saturated and you're going to be left with a lot of flavor still left in your oak chips. Because this is recycling the solvent, it's that you're going to extract every single last bit of our French oak chips flavor and color. Okay, so this is my soccer extractor, this is my stainless steel thimble, and then the last part is my condenser. Okay, so here's the hole where in the vapors is going to travel through. It's going to travel up in my um, condenser and my cold water is going to condense it back down. Now you can see there is two water hoses connected to it already. Now, it does matter which one of this is going to be your cold water, which is going to be your inlet, and which one is going to be your hot water, your outlet. So, the rule of thumb is your steam should always travel in the opposite direction in um, which your cold water travels. So, my steam is going to travel upwards, which means my cold water is going to have to travel downwards, coming down. And your cold water should take the longest path. Um, to, in your in your tube. So you'll see there's a coil that turns and then there's one that goes straight down. Now the direction of my cold water flow will be from the top, so it's going to come down the condenser, the coil. It's going to go all the way down and then quickly going to go up. Um, and this, then it's going to be hot, exiting with the red tube. So you don't have to use blue and, and red. This is just for myself to I um, know which one I need to connect where. Okay. okay, so a few other things.
things we're going to be needing is the plant material we're going to be extracting. Like I said today, I'm going to be extracting the essences of oak chips. So I'm actually going to be making a concentrate, a French oak concentrate. So our normal method of doing it is just taking the French oak chips, adding it to a glass container, topping it up with ethanol, and just keeping it in there for however, lo however long it takes for it, the bottle to be finished. And then we usually just take a few drops or a few mils and add it to our plain um, clear spirit, and then it gives you that oak, oaky flavor, that oak effect. But today, I don't want to do that method. I'm going to be making a pure concentrate and essence um, using this method. Then what I'm also going to need is I'm going to need my solvent. Today I'm using ethanol, this is pure ethanol, that we've just extracted, we've distilled um, a sugar wash with. So that's about 94% in strength. The reason why I'm using um, ethanol made from sugar wash is because I want to consume it. I want to be able to put it in my spirit and not be harmful. You don't always use ethanol as a solvent in this method. Sometimes you use other solvents as well, like um, methanol, you can use um, hexane, etc. But these solvents are very, very dangerous. So for that reason, I'm just going to be using potable ethanol. I'm also going to be needing a scissors. Um, I've already adjusted my tube lengths, but I'm just going to explain to you how to do that yourself. I'll talk about that just now. A uh, beaker, because I'm going to be measuring out my solvent. And then, which is really nice, it's just some hose clamps. I just used it to secure my hoses, just to prevent it from leaking anywhere. Okay guys, so now it's time to actually run our succulent extractor. Okay guys, so first things first, um, I need to make sure my gas is turned on. I've got my gas connected, yes. Okay, so then uh, make sure your boiler is absolutely clean. You're not going to fill this up right now. So you're first going to set up your succulent and then you're going to add your solvent. So make sure this is on your gas burner. Then just need some clamps and seals. Okay, and then just going to put on my succulent extractor. should be fine. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the length of my um, these tubes. So firstly, the one thing that you need to look at is the height of this bend. Now I've already adjusted it to a certain length, but if you get yours, you might notice that your bend actually ends around here and that's way too, too long. These tubes are way too long. Um, so you need to cut it. Now, the height of this bend, the, to the top of this bend, will determine at which level our solvent will drain. You don't want it to end here, otherwise it's going to start draining as soon as it hits this level. You don't want it to drain there, otherwise you're not going to see if there's any problems preventing it from draining. So the ideal place for it to drain is somewhere where you can still see the top part um, of your solvent layer, so that it doesn't go into the stainless steel part. So this is actually fine, but I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. For that, I'm going to need my screwdriver to loosen up these hose clamps. There you go. So I'm just going to press it in a little. Okay. There we go. Loosen this one a little bit more. should be fine. I think I am happy with that. Oh, let's just a little bit more. There we go. And then remember to tighten these again. So you might notice that you're going to have to play around with this level quite a bit while setting up or when it starts running because sometimes if it's too uneven it's going to stop um, it from draining completely. So you might notice that the first few times you're going to be running your socks at extractor that it's going to take 
um, some adjustments. But once you've got it, you know, your machine, then um, you shouldn't have any problems in the future. Also, this shouldn't suck any air. So really make sure your hose clamps are tightened really, really well. Okay, so the next thing, I need to tighten my tubes to my socks extractor using a cable tie. This is just going to prevent it from bobbing around. You don't want that happening. So I'm just going to be using a cable tie. Ah, and that should, should be fine. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is going to fill up your, your thimble with your plant material. There you go, that's one. Two, and then in this third packet will fit in there as well. Okay, I've got a little bit left. So I'm just going to Get some of this dust out, these really fine, fine pieces. Yeah, oh, that should be fine. Okay, now I'm going to put this into my socket extractor. Just drop it. There we go. Okay, now the next step is going to be to add your solvent. Now, the amount of solvent required is dependent on the size of your socket extractor. Now, you don't want to add too much solvent, otherwise you're not going to have a very concentrated pro um, product at the bottom um, when you're done extracting. So you want to add um, just enough solvent. So the amount that you're going to add is about one and a half times or one and 75% of the volume of the um, Soxid extractor. I'm going to add just a little bit over half um, the second time just because these oak chips tend to soak up quite a bit of um, the liquid. So I'm just going to compensate for that. So let me just add, I might have too little solvent in here but I'll just add some more if this is not enough. See, this it's already draining, so it has reached the maximum height of my bend. So you're just going to wait for that to drain completely. Okay, I might need to get some more solvent. Okay, guys, so now I've filled up it um, halfway again for the second time, so this will be enough solvent to prevent it from actually boiling dry when it's at its maximum um, volume. So the next thing it, to do is to connect my condenser. For that, just make sure you're using your seals. There you go. Okay. Remember, you are working with flammable solvents at the moment, so you want to make sure that there are no leakages of your solvent. So make sure you connect everything nice and tight using your seals. Now this is connected, so I'm going to start um, the put on the heat now, so that this can start warming up. I'm not going to put on the water just yet. The reason being is I'm not circulating my water 
my water source is directly from the tap and unfortunately it's going down the drain. So I don't want to be wasting unnecessary water so I'm going to only start turning it on once the vapors reach this tube over here. Now um, the, rate, the flow rate of your water. I'm going to use the slowest flow rate possible to, um, but preventing that any of my vapors escape from the top of my condenser. There is an opening in the top of my condenser and if you see any steam coming out of there, that means either your heat addition is too much, so you need to reduce your heat, or you need to increase the flow rate of your cold water. So you're really going to start playing around with this until you're at the perfect um, ratio of cold water and heat addition. So I'm going to go ahead and do that once this starts heating, or the, once the vapor starts reaching this tube over here, I'm going to start filming again and then we're going to go from there. So as you can see, the vapors is already starting to form, it's, going, it's filling up this tube and these vapors are now traveling into my condenser. It's been condensed, I can already see some drip back happening over here and it's filling up my chamber, my glass chamber. Now be careful, it's going to become hot, so try not to touch, touch it and prevent yourself from burning. And like I said, we are working with extremely flammable solvent, so you really want to make sure that there's no leaks. And remember to check at the top of your condenser that there's no steam coming out. Now you need to take care, the rate of heat addition also plays a, uh, plays a part in how well this draining functions. If your heat addition is too much, you're going to notice that this level is going to go past the height of that bend and it's not going to drain. That means you are distilling um, too fast. So then you're just going to reduce your heat. And that's why I said gas works much better than a induction stove because you ca cannot fine tune your induction stove as well that you can do with your gas. So you'll notice that there's already some color being extracted. So this is going to happen every time when there's new solvent coming in. And in your boiler, you're going to notice that's going to become really, really dark. It's going to become really, really concentrated. So this is the nice thing about using this method. It's nice to make your own extracts, um, your own concentrates. Let's say you have a really, really nice gin recipe, but you don't have the time to infuse all of your gin botanicals every single time, you can use your socket extraction. Make one concentrate and then just add it to your neutral spirit and then voila, you've got a gin straight away. So this is nice about this method, it's not just for essential oil extraction. Now, one of the problems with this method compared to distillation is like I said, essential oils are hydrophobic, which means they naturally separate from your water layer. With Ethanol, it dissolves into your solvent, so it's, there's no two clear layers. So what you're going to have to do when using this method or when using ethanol as a solvent is you're going to have to do an additional um, distillation on this to separate your solvent from your oils. That's just the, the schlep of using Soxlet. But for making concentrates, for making, let's say, oak extracts, this actually works really great. So I can see it's, a, it's very, very close to the top. I'm just going to reduce my heat slightly because um, I've got a feeling that this is way too hot and it's not going to drain. So it should start draining within the next minute or so. Like I said, your first two times that using your socks, that it's going to take some adjustments. You might need to adjust the height of your tube over here. Um, you might need to play around with your water or with your heat addition, but once you've mastered your machine, your extraction equipment, this is a really, really nice method to use. And there we go, it's starting to drain. Okay, it's draining slightly too slow. So let's just reduce my heat. Okay, so there is obviously a problem over here. This might be due to my bend being skew. So I might need to make this tube either longer or this one slightly shorter. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do that. I'm going to just reduce my heat so that all of my vapors condenses. Um, and then I'm going to try to make this drain. And when everything is drained, I'm quickly going to adjust 
my cheeks. So I have adjusted the length of my cheeks. So I'm hoping that it's going to drain now. But like I said, you really going to, the first few times you're going to be operating this, there's going to be some adjustments you're going to make. But until you've got that perfect thin, trust me, it's going to be really, really easy. So it is almost at the top of my bend. So it should drop, start draining very, very soon. It seems like it wants to go. Perfect. So that's exactly what you want. So what's going to happen now? It's going to keep on. Um, babies are st going to keep on forming. It's going to keep on condensing, and this is going to circulate the whole time. So this process can literally go on for hours or days or weeks. So I'm going to allow it to run for a few hours so that I can get the maximum oak extraction. When do you know when to stop? Now, as you can see, the, this glass in it was quite brown, it was quite dark, it really had a beautiful color. But after a few hours, you're going to notice that dark brown color is going to start looking very diluted. It's going to almost look like this, the original color of the solvent, which is clear. So as soon as you see there's no more color being extracted in your glass cylinder, then you know, okay, it's time to put off your gas, because you are done extracted. You've literally extracted every single last bit of oak possible. Okay, so I'm going to keep this on running and then, yeah, guys, this was our socks of extraction.